Hold it. <laughs> like Holden likes to wear. That's yeah, retro. This is a, a picture of, of Craig. Looks like a total surfer. Yeah, it's not. Feathered hair. <laughs> you can see in Craig's eyes, he always had so much life. And then when you see him later, it's almost like there was nothing there. I was the first of three boys. We grew up relatively poor. My brother Craig, we were really close. We were able to support each other and we could deal with some of the circumstances of us growing up together and that made all the difference. He was smart and good looking. I remember being so envious of how everything came to him so easily. I thought the world was truly his oyster. He got married and had, had children and we live our lives and he lived his life. Craig had been diagnosed with some pretty severe depression and anxiety issues, and he was sorting through it and doing everything in his power. But we kept it from my parents. I had arrived in London for business in July of uh, 2017. I woke up early on uh, Monday morning, and there were a barrage of text messages. I called my family and heard that uh, my brother had said that he was going to kill himself. I remember thinking, what, what can I do? How can I stop this? I'm thousands and thousands of miles away. So I, uh, I flew home. For that entire flight, we got to hope. He drove to Zuma Beach. He turned off his phone. He walked into the ocean and uh, killed himself. I've had a lot of hard conversations in my, in my life, personally and professionally. They all pale to having to tell a child that they've lost their parent or a parent that they've lost their child, especially in the same day. Sometime on Monday, I checked my personal email. My brother had sent me an email to say goodbye. It was clear how lonely he was, even though he had all these people around him. When Craig and I were younger, I remember thinking, come on, you're so smart and so talented. Why can't you get through this? And I actually never got it until I talked to someone. He had gone through depression and he said, to really understand what someone is going through, I want you to just think about the worst day you've ever had in your life. Now multiply that times 100, and that's what every single day feels like. And I, I just didn't understand the depth of pain. It became clear to me that there was something I had to do. The evidence is showing that much of the mental health issues that surface in adults started in their earlier childhood. Kids start to manifest these symptoms when they're young. It can take up to 15 years from the time a child originally shows some behavior issue to when they actually seek care. So think about the outcome of that child if we can understand, identify, and treat before it becomes catastrophic. That's the whole message around integrated mental and behavioral health. There's no such thing as overall good health without good mental health. Gail was at a community event. Children's came and spoke. Magically, a connection got formed. One of the things that we were doing a lot of talking about is how do we work around mental wellness and health? So we were so excited that Children's was right. interested in doing this right here, right in our backyard.
Most children are receiving their medical care in their pediatrician's offices. They're going to the doctor to have evaluation of their physical health. Our program, Integrated Mental Health, is placing a behavioral health specialist in the pediatrician's office as part of the care team. So the checkup is actually addressing all issues of the child's health at the same time. This is a great model because the children are already here. We can walk into the room and right away work with the families. The generosity of this gift, it allows to do things that we would have waited a long time to get done and might not have ever gotten done. Our goal is to have therapists partnering with our pediatricians so that we can get the services to the kids when they need it. We have two million touch points with kids a year. So the scale of what we're doing, we can start to really produce the data that will help others across the country and across the world. To know that there's an opportunity out there to touch the lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of children, to change the direction of where life may have gone, to help people not have to have the conversations that I had. What could be more rewarding than that?